Oh hi, it's Rob. And I'm in the kitchen today, although not to do any cooking. Uh, the thing is, I live in a house that is almost 100 years old. And when it was originally done, some of the, well, the wiring was done with the uh, knob and tube stuff. Uh, you've probably, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's, uh, it's not <clears throat> pleasant. Um, I'll, I'll try and show you some later. But the, uh, it's not something that I would choose to reuse, but when they were doing some remodeling on the house, rather than rewiring some of the lighting circuits, they decided to keep the old knob and tube wiring, uh, mostly for lights. Now, uh, that's not a horrible thing, because usually with the lighting, it's, it's pretty low current and all that, but occasionally there are problems. And one of those problems happened to me yesterday. So this is what I mean by knob and tube wiring. These are the knobs. They're a ceramic material and they have the wire just going through them. This is a cloth covered wire that's kind of got a rubberized coating on it. Uh, this is another one here. This is, I don't know, maybe the other side of the circuit. It's kind of difficult to tell because none of it's labeled. And as you can see, there's enough of it that goes up into the wall there. Some of it comes down on this side. Uh, it's generally not something that I like very much. Oh yeah, that is the insulation in the house. Yeah, and I live in Minnesota. So, I uh, had a little problem yesterday. I managed to short one of these wires and there were, you know, the usual sparks and various things that happen when you short wires. And uh, lights went out. So I thought, okay, I'll go downstairs and I'll reset the circuit breaker. Uh, this is the circuit breaker panel. And if you'll notice, none of the breakers are tripped. Now, it should be one of the four over here. And none of those have tripped. None of these is tripped. Unfortunately, that means that it's done something to the wiring somewhere. Uh, and I don't know where. So, it managed to take out the lighting in five rooms, which is you know, wonderful in some sense of the word. Uh, but I'm going to see if I can figure out what's wrong with it. Uh, I would prefer not to reuse it, but if it is, yeah, I mean, it, that's, if reusing it is going to be the way to get the lights back on quicker, then I will probably do that because it'll be simpler. Otherwise, it's going to mean doing a whole lot of rewiring, and that is something that I do not look forward to. That's a tremendous amount of work, and I don't have the time or the money uh, to be doing that right now. So, I'm going to go for it and see if I can determine what's wrong. So it was one of these two switches that made all the uh, little sparky things. Uh, what I'm going to do is take a meter and see if there is any voltage on these. I'm guessing that this one is probably the one that uh, is the worst off. Because I'm not sure... I think this one is not even connected to the knob and tube wiring. This is connected to the Romex. Um, this one I think is also connected to the Romex, so this one is the knob and tube. I believe. Uh, I'm going to take a look at it and verify, but uh, pretty sure that's what's going on. And before you say it, yes, I know that this house wiring is atrocious. The previous owner, or the owner before that, I'm not sure which, liked to fix things. He was very fixy. Didn't necessarily know what he was doing. Uh, but he certainly did things. Well, okay, there's one issue. Uh, wire broke completely off. One of the things I really hate about knob and tube wiring is that there is no easy ground reference anywhere. You're just dealing with single wire circuits and it's incredibly difficult to figure out what is going on from that alone. 
And of course, this is too short. Yeah, I'm getting about one volt AC across here, which is pretty indicative that the power is not on. Don't like working on live circuits, but this is not working as a live circuit at the moment. <laughs> so just to uh, verify that I just got shocked. Seems really weird. All right, I am not overly enthused by this. What? is going on. All right, I'm going to try and get this wire off of here. Okay, I finally did get the switch out, which is uh, quite nice. And just for the heck of it, I am going to do a bit of testing. Okay. These two are definitely live. So this one is the dead one. Uh, let me see if I have any. Voltage there, okay, I've got 120 volts there. So this side is still good. This side is the one that is the problem. Or not. <laughs> I'm going to swap tips. Okay, so this is intriguing. Uh, if I measure from this lead to here, I'm getting 120 volts. So there's definitely line current across those two. Uh, however, I'm also getting line current or line voltage across these two. And that's confusing to me. Um, not sure what is going on there. Hmm. I got to think about this for a minute and I'll be back. Well, this is the kind of thing that will give any electrician nightmares. Um, when they did rewire, they did it kind of badly, but this used to be the box that the main power line came into the house. Uh, I don't know if there was a fuse box in here or what. This is all kind of strange and I'm not entirely sure what is going on. Spiders have of course been in here, but these are all the nice circuits that branch off into the knob and tube wiring, at least for up here. So, this is the feed that comes in from the circuit box in the basement. This is a split, uh, it's 
I think anyway, that this is a 200. <laughs> I think this is a split phase, so it's got 240 across here, I believe. Uh, hang on, I'll be right back. Uh, okay, as I was saying, I believe that this is a split 220. So we've got one phase on the black wire, one phase on the red wire. The white wire is neutral. And then, of course, this is the ground bonding wire. Um, now, I don't know which circuit that light is on, but I am going to, okay, I've got one going to here. Isis, no bark. I am going to Got this one on here. Check and make sure that there is voltage there. Oh, and look at that, it comes around. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> when I put the test lead in, the light comes on. When I pull it out, the light goes off. So, yes indeed, there it is. If you can see that, one wire is not making very good contact. Okay, well, at least I found where I think the problem is. Now let's try and figure out how to fix it. All right, what I did is I just moved the wire up a little bit. And I'm now tightening down the wire nut to make sure that it has a good connection. And the light is now on. I'm going to go check a couple of the other lights, make sure that they are working. And yes, indeed, it does fix the problem with the other lights. Okay, I'm going to take this one apart again and put the switch back in because I don't like working on live circuits. Uh, so, I'll just do that. Yeah, the wire that was loose is the actual power feed, so... All right, and we'll be back in a minute. All right, I've got the switch reinstalled. <laughs> and you can tell the power comes back on, the lights come on. Isis, no bark. <clears throat> so I know that this is a horrible nightmare to look at. It was, uh, Frightening for me when I first saw it. And, oh, yeah, I guess this was a fuse box at one time. There are still fuses in here. Huh. Along with other things. Uh, okay. Well, so that one's fixed. At least uh, good enough for now. Eventually, I really want to go through and redo, get rid of all of the knob and tube connections and make sure everything is rewired, but that is a major undertaking and I really can't afford to do it right now, either time-wise or money-wise. So, I guess we're going to go with it as is and say good enough for now. Yeah, and just to let you know, I did uh, replace the old switch with a new, more modern one. I'm not sure when these were put in, uh, but they are Leviton, so I think they might be okay. Uh, I'm not going to mess with them. I'll put a cover back on this, and uh, we'll be good to go. But 
yeah, this is this is the kind of thing that happens when you end up with a hundred year old house. And in case you're wondering, no, this kind of stuff doesn't even phase me anymore. Uh, I have seen far worse. You know, it's something comes along and breaks, and I have to open up the wall to look at it. And when I look at it, it's like, uh, how, why, why did they do this? Uh, but it is what it is, so I've got to live with it for now until I can afford to, you know, do a big old remodel, which is going to be a while yet. So, all right, till next time. See you.